What's going on, YouTube? Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning into our channel. I'm Ty. I'm Katie. We're to get up travel. travel. And today we're headed to the UK. Today, we are checking out the difference between the UK, Great, Great Britain, Britain, and England. England. Explained. Yeah. So, um, what's the difference? I don't know. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know. We're so going to learn. We're going to find out. Something today. If it's your first time checking out our TK Top Travel channel, give us a quick subscribe. We greatly appreciate it. Hit the notification bell. We come out with videos every single day. Yeah, we sure do. So, thank you. Yes, thank you. All right. I'm excited to learn about this. Yes, me too. I know there's a bunch of different accents well, the United Kingdom and a, whole lot more and a lot of history. The United Kingdom, England, Great Britain, are these three the same place? Are they different places? Do British people secretly laugh at those who use the terms incorrectly? Who knows the answers to these Probably. questions? Probably. <laughs> Let me tell you right now. For the lost, this is the world, this is the European continent, and this is the place we have to untangle. The area shown in purple is the United Kingdom. Part of the confusion is that the United Kingdom is not a single country, but instead is a country of countries. It contains inside of it four co-equal and sovereign nations. The first of these is England, shown here in red. England is often confused with the United Kingdom as a whole because it's the largest and most populous of the nations and contains the de facto capital city, London. To the north is Scotland, shown in blue, and to the west is Wales, shown in white. And, often forgotten even by those who live in the United Kingdom, is Northern Ireland, shown in orange. Each country has a local term for the population. While you can call them all British, it's not recommended as the four countries generally don't like each other. The Northern Irish, Scottish, and Welsh regard the English as slave-driving colonial masters. No matter that all three have their own devolved parliaments and are allowed to vote on English laws despite their verse not being true, and the English generally guard the rest as rural yokels who spend too much time with their sheep. However, as the four constituent countries don't have their own passports, they are all British citizens, like it or not. They are British citizens of the United Kingdom, whose full name, by the way, is the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Oh, oh wow. Hiding. Right here. The area covered in black is Great Britain. Unlike England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland, Great Britain is a geographical Wait, rather than a political term. That's kind of confusing there, because... Yeah. So you can say, oh, I know someone from the United Kingdom, and it would be this whole thing. Yeah. But then if you said Great Britain... It's this. It's that, but it could also be England, but it could also be Wales. Yeah. Okay. England so if I say, oh, I know or Scotland someone, or Scotland. Okay. So they're considered Wales Great and Britain. Great Britain. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Great Britain is the largest island among the British Isles. Within the United Kingdom, the term Great Britain is often used to refer to England, Scotland, and Wales alone, okay. with the intentional exclusion of Northern Ireland. This is mostly, but not completely true, as all three constituent countries have islands that are not part of Great Britain, such as the Isle of Wight, part of England, the Welsh Isle of Oh, Anglesey, that's a little island. Yeah, yeah. Britain, look at all those, too. The Auckland Islands and the Islands of the Clyde. The second biggest island in the British Isles is Ireland. It's worth noting at this point that Ireland is not a country, like Great Britain is a geographical, not political term. The island of Ireland contains on its two countries, Northern Ireland, which we have already discussed, and the Republic of Ireland. I thought if Ireland was a country. Irish, they're referring to the Republic of it's Ireland, not. a separate you? country from the United Kingdom. However, both the Republic of Ireland and the United Kingdom are members of the European Union, even though England in particular likes to pretend that it's an island in the mid-Atlantic rather than 50 kilometers off the coast of France. But that's a story for another time. Wait, what is that there? <laughs> yeah, what was that? What was that? Wait a second. Rewind. <laughs> when people say they are Irish, they are referring to the Republic of Ireland, which is a separate country from the United Kingdom. However, both the Republic of Ireland and the United Kingdom are members of the European Union, even though England in particular likes to pretend that it's an island in the mid-Atlantic rather than 50 kilometers off the coast of France. But that's a story for another time. To oh, review, the okay. two largest <laughs> islands in the British Isles are Ireland and Great Britain. Ireland has on its two countries, the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland, while Great Britain mostly contains three, England, Scotland, and Wales. These last three, when combined with Northern Ireland, form the United Kingdom. There are still many unanswered questions such as why when you travel to canada is there british royalty on the money to answer this we need there to is oh wow you can't have gone to school in the english-speaking world without having learned that the british empire once spanned a fourth of the world's land and governed nearly a fourth of the world's people while it's easy to remember the parts of the british empire that broke away violently we often forget how many nations gained independence through diplomacy not bloodshed these want to be nations struck a deal with the empire where they continue to recognize the monarchy as the head of oh, state australia the new zealand to understand how they are connected, we need to talk about the crown. Not the physical crown that sits behind glass in the Tower of London and earns millions of tourist pounds for the UK, but the crown is a complicated legal entity best thought of as a one-man corporation. Who created this corporation? God did. According to British tradition, all power is vested in God, and the monarch is crowned in a Christian ceremony. God, however, not wanting to be bothered with micromanagement, conveniently delegates his power to an entity called the Crown. While this used to be the physical crown in the Tower of London, it evolved over time into a legal corporation soul, able to be controlled only by the ruling monarch. So would that be like the... Like the Queen of England, right? Is that all considered um, the, crown, the crown, like the royal family? I'm 
guessing maybe? It's a useful reminder that the United Kingdom oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> is a theocracy with a reigning monarch acting as both the head of state and the supreme governor of the official state religion Anglicanism. Such are the oddities that arise when dealing with a thousand year old monarchy. Back to Canada and the rest. The former colonies that gained their independence through diplomacy and continue to recognize the authority of the crown are known as the Commonwealth realm. They are, in decreasing order of population, Canada, Australia, Papua New Guinea, New Zealand, Jamaica, the Solomon Islands, Belize, the Bahamas, Barbados, St. Oh, wow. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Grenada, Antigua and Barbuda, St. Kitts and Nevis, and Tuvalu. <laughs> All are independent nations, but still recognize the monarchy as the head of state, even though it has little real power within their borders. There are three hmm. further entities that Wait, to... so they recognize the monarchy, meaning they... Like, they favor the Queen of England? All of those places? I guess so. Wow. Crown, and these are the Crown Dependencies, the Isle of Man, Jersey, and Guernsey. Unlike the Commonwealth realm, they are not considered independent nations, but are granted local autonomy by the Crown and British citizenship by the United Kingdom. Though the UK does reserve the right to overrule the laws of their local assemblies. Are we done now? Almost, but not quite. There are still a couple of loose threads, such as this place. The tiny city of Gibraltar on the southern coast of Spain, famous for its rock, its monkeys, oh. and causing oh. diplomatic tension between the United Kingdom and Spain. Or what about the Falkland Islands, which caused so much tension between the United Kingdom and Argentina that they went to war over them? These places belong in the last group of crown properties known as British Overseas Territories, but their former name, Crown Colonies, gives away their origin. They are the last vestiges of the British Empire. Unlike the Commonwealth realm, they have not become independent nations and continue to rely on the United Kingdom for military and sometimes economic assistance. Like the Crown Dependencies, everyone born within their borders is a British citizen. The Crown Colonies are, in decreasing order of population, Bermuda, the Cayman Islands, the Turks and Caicos Islands, Gibraltar, the British Virgin Islands, Akrotiri and Dekelia, Anguilla, St. Helena, the Ascension Islands, Tristan da Cunha, Montserrat, Whoa. the British Indian Ocean Territory, the South Georgia and South Sandwich Islands. All over the world. All over the world. Territory and the Pitcairn Islands. For our final oh, Venn diagram, wow. the United Kingdom is a country situated on the British Isles that is part of the Crown, which is controlled by the monarchy. Also part of the Crown in the British Isles are the Crown Dependencies. The independent nations of the former empire that still recognize the crown are the Commonwealth realm and the non-independent realm. Okay, oh what? Oh my. Overseas <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. Okay, wait, go back to that. I want yeah, to see that. What? That was confusing. Yeah. <laughs> I thought this was going to clear it up for me, but... <laughs> All right, so I get... Uh, okay. <laughs> oh, man. The British Isles, okay, has UK, Ireland, Britain... Great Britain. What's the difference between Britain and Great Britain? Is that the same thing? Britain and Great Britain. <laughs> oh, God. I think it's the same thing. Okay. <laughs> wow. Let us know in the comments. Yeah. And I'd like to know, like, he was saying that there was a feud between the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland. <laughs> Ireland. I wonder yeah, what's, what's that about. That about? And what does crown dependencies mean? Yeah, what is that? Dependent on In the a crown? commonwealth realm. Okay. We're going to need well, some comments. We're going to need some further <laughs> explanations. So yes. let us know in the comments down below if you have... This was a good This was a good breakdown, but if yeah, you have an sure. even more simpler breakdown, yeah. <laughs> let us know in the comments. Yeah, th below. and thank you so much for watching this video. <laughs> and if it's your first time coming across our channel, checking out one of our videos, please give us a quick subscribe. And hit that notification bell to stay up to date because we come out with videos every, every single, single day. day. And we can't wait to see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. See ya.